Welcome to Ohio's Amish country. Maybe you live here. Maybe you're visiting. Surely you know what's so nice about it. The green grass, blue skies, simple living, and quiet farms. People come here for that. Sometimes lots of people. Amish country stands as one of Ohio's most popular tourist spots. With that comes a problem. Driving has gotten dangerous for the people who live here and the people who visit. Driving here is different. Cars, buggies, wagons, tractors, bikes and horses all share the road at some time. Plus some roads are hilly and many are narrow. It all demands extra attention and greater care. The goal is keeping our roads safe for you and everyone on them. Ohio averages 140 crashes each year between motor vehicles and horse-drawn vehicles. Besides the property damage involved in those cars and buggies involved in the crashes, as you can imagine, the injuries and fatalities can be severe. Buggies are made of wood, fiberglass, and a thin layer of vinyl. Wagons and pony carts have even less protection. Put any of those vehicles against an automobile and the results are devastating. A study by the Ohio Department of Transportation, or ODOT, found three main reasons for these crashes to occur. First, underestimating speed differential. The driver doesn't realize that they're going a lot faster than the buggy. Second, visibility. A black buggy with no markings can be nearly impossible to see. And third, unexpected vehicle actions. By motor vehicles, horse-drawn vehicles, or both. The good news is these conditions are preventable. Let's take a look at how. Speed differential. This is you traveling either faster or slower than another vehicle on the roadway. This can either create a gap that's very big or very small. It's important to be able to make sure that you understand the differences of speed differential. That way you can create an adequate gap between you and another vehicle and keep yourself from being involved in a crash. If you're traveling 55 miles per hour, and another vehicle ahead of you, approximately 500 feet away, is traveling at a pace of 45 miles per hour. It's important for you to understand that in less than six seconds, you will be approximately 400 some feet away from the vehicle. This allows enough reaction time for you to be able to stop or turn or have evasive action if necessary. On a buggy, it's going to be a little different. If you're following a buggy 500 feet away and you're traveling at a pace of 55 miles per hour and the buggy traveling at five miles per hour, in less than six seconds, you will be approximately 40 feet behind that buggy. This decreases your ability to be able to stop or react or have evasive action. A lot of times, this is what causes a crash. In the wintertime, especially when there's snow on the roadway, you're going to have even less time to be able to react and your closure distance will be even less. It's very important when the weather is bad to give even more distance between you and the vehicles that you're following, especially the horse-drawn buggies. In Amish country, the roads are curvy and windy and hilly. This decreases your reaction time immensely. Whereas before we talked the 500 feet distance where you might be able to see a vehicle, this is drastically reduced in Amish country. The number two cause of car and buggy crashes is bad visibility. Simply not seeing the buggy or just not seeing it soon enough. But simple, effective, affordable ways exist to make horse-drawn vehicles more visible and the people in them safer. Ohio has made great strides to improve the safety of roads in just a short period of time. The first formal event occurred in 1993 when a group of Amish leaders walked into the county extension office and asked the Kershockton County Extension Educator for assistance. What they were looking for was help to improve highway safety. That educator contacted the Agriculture State Safety Office in the Department of Food, Agriculture, and Biological Engineering. The specialists and my colleagues there sat and listened to the Amishmen's concerns. Basically, they'd be willing to entertain ideas as long as they met their three main conditions. First, it had to improve the safety of the roadways. Second, it had to be affordable. And third, it had to conform to their culture and religious beliefs. Well, a team came together. Amishmen from Wayne, Holmes, and Kershockton County sat down with extension educators from Wayne, Holmes, Kershockton, Ashland, Geauga, and Tuscarawas counties. The Agriculture State Safety Office partnered with the Ohio Department of Public Safety, and a two-year study was launched. 
Even today, demonstrations around Ohio continue to take place to show the benefits of buggy visibility. A recommended practice was put in place for horse-drawn vehicles in 2001 by the American Society for Agricultural and Biological Engineers and updated in 2008. Many of the national recommendations in this standard resulted from that first study. Plans are in a free fact sheet, lighting and marking recommendations for buggies and wagons. It can be found at your county office of OSU Extension, or you can also get it online. Let's take a look at the recommendations. First, an SMV emblem, one that's clean and clearly displayed about two to six feet high in the middle of the rear of the buggy. It warns that what it's on is going slow. It means a speed of less than 25 miles an hour. Second, reflective tape. Use it on the front, back, and sides. Alternate red and orange on the back, or use white, but make it at least an inch wide. What doesn't work well is black tape. We don't recommend that you use it. It doesn't work nearly as well as new tapes. Next, headlights. Ideally, white and two, if not more. Check the fact sheet for options. Tail lights too. Red and two at least. Again, there are options, and turn signals too can be part of it. Then flashing amber lights, hazard lights, two or more, two and a half to 12 feet high, visible from the front and the back. Also an option, new LED lights. They are easy to install. They're bright and long lasting and use a lot less battery power. Also good are leg wraps for horses. They go above the fetlock, are light in weight and easy to put on, and many buggy drivers now are putting reflective tape on the shafts of the wheels. In winter especially, the lighting and markings we've talked about are a help. Really, a strobe light is one of the best things, and not just for buggies, but wagons and carts. Just a reminder, low visibility doesn't just happen at night. It also happens in rain, fog, snow, and in bright sun. At sunrise or at sunset when the sun is on the horizon. The number three cause of car buggy crashes, unexpected vehicle actions. Here's how we can avoid them, no matter what we're driving. Sometimes, all too often, a buggy will attempt to make a left-hand turn and a vehicle behind it will attempt to pass. All too often, this leads to a crash. It's very important for those traveling in the buggy to make sure that they signal upon making a left-hand turn and making sure that the roadway's clear. In addition, it's important for those traveling in a motor vehicle to make sure that they are aware that the buggy may attempt to slow down to turn. For buggy drivers, what's important for you is to make sure that you always signal. Be prepared to stop, look for traffic coming towards you, but also traffic coming behind you. For car drivers, what's important also if you attempt to make a pass of a buggy, make sure that you give adequate space for the buggy and for the horse. Be quiet as you're making your pass, but most importantly, make sure that you're passing in legal areas. Do not pass over a double yellow line or where the line is on your side of the roadway. What's very important for everybody traveling in any area is the distracted driving. You should give 100% of your attention while traveling on any roadway in the state of Ohio, but particularly in Amish country. You never quite know when you will see a buggy right over the next hill. When you do approach an intersection and you're behind a buggy, it's very important for you to make sure that you allow adequate space behind the buggy. Oftentimes, when the buggy stopped, the horse will move the buggy backwards just a few feet. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that you can see, at the very least, the wheel of the buggy hitting the ground. What's also very important to remember, horses are not machines. They don't operate the way a normal vehicle would. It's very important to make sure that you allow them adequate space. Don't make any extra loud or obnoxious noises when passing a buggy to where it might spook the horse. For buggy drivers, just as a suggestion, if you have a newer or greener horse, it's probably not recommended to have that horse out on a busier roadway. Allow your horse the opportunity to have the ability to travel on less traveled roads where less vehicles are around until your horse can become accustomed to traveling on the busier roadways. And now a word about winter. First, snow plows can't pass buggies. They can't skip over a spot in the road, and that's what they do if they pass you. So if you're driving a horse-drawn vehicle, but try to pull over as soon as you can in the first drive or side spot you come to. Signal, pull off, turn your horse away from the plow, and wait for it to go by. It can't pass like a car can pass by going around on the left. It has to plow the lane you're in. Help it get its work done. 
Work that keeps everyone safer. Pull off as soon as you can. Remember the speed differential. Keep closure time in mind. Stay alert for lights and markings. Know what to expect. Know what to look for. By driving with care, by paying attention, by watching out for others and by knowing what to do, all of us together can make Amish country safer.